Hello everyone, Steven here. Thank you for joining me today. Uh, today, I wasn't really planning on creating any content actually, but just so happens that I browse Facebook and I am a sucker. I saw uh, one of the local reefers is actually breeding Bangai um, Cardinal fish and he's got a bunch. They look really good, a lot of good reviews from the previous customers. So I decided to stop by him and pick some up. You know, they were decent price. I think most of the Bengay Cardinals that are either wild cut or um, locally bred are around, um, you know, at least $25 to a range of 25 to 40 a pop. Uh, he is offering me $15 a piece. Uh, for this guys here. They're about two inch long. I already have two of them in my tank and I really want to start a small group and see if they can um, pair up and uh, start mating. So I know they're kind of captive bred, um, but you know what? Um, a lot of people have mixed opinions, you know, if they're captive bred and captive raised and probably you don't need to quarantine them, but um, right now my tenet is whenever you get a fish, you quarantine them. It doesn't matter if they're wild caught or a captive raised. So let's talk about the quarantine tank a little bit. You know, I previously had this tank set up and um, it was on for maybe about a couple months until all my fish um, went into the display tank. So then I drained it. It was dry for the most part uh, for the last uh, couple weeks or so. And um, now that we got uh, more fish, so I added more water and started restarted again. So quarantine tank, um, it doesn't actually need to be very big. This one is a little bit overkill. It, uh, it is actually a 75 gallon tank, but I've only added 25 gallons of water. So it's a third of the way full. And what I have in there is a couple of uh, homemade kind of shelter thingy for fish to hide in. Um, there's a piece of uh, filtration tile and then heater. And then there is a filter without the carbon for just kind of water movement and uh, clean up the gunk. So that's it, nothing fancy. Um, as a matter of fact, you probably don't want to put too much sand or rock in there anyways, because they actually absorb, uh, they actually absorb copper. This is what I learned is that the more rock and sand in, in there you have, the more the more copper you need to dose in order for the copper to actually stay in the water column. So let's see, I'm actually not even going to float them because it feels like the water temperature is pretty good. So let me grab a scissors and uh, I'll open up this bag up right back. All right, I've got the bag open now and there's a hole there. So a little better view of the fish. Uh, you know, I normally do drip acclimation for any kind of invert corals, but uh, I don't really bother to do that with fish. Uh, believe it or not, fish are actually, uh, for the most part, pretty okay with changes in salinity as long as it's uh, like a huge swing. Um, and also a, a tiny bit of temperature um, because you know they, they do have the body organs to regulate all that. So I am going to pour this into the bucket here as you all know my policy is uh never allow other people's uh water touch my water okay so i've got the water drained into the bucket right now is a good opportunity to kind of inspect the fish just make sure there isn't anything weird odd parasite anything that they can carry looks good so let me go ahead and uh release them into the quarantine tank that I've set up. A little bit of a side view. Just make sure they're swimming okay. Yeah, it looks like they're doing just fine. You probably don't want your um, water flow to be too strong in quarantine tanks because a lot of fish when they first arrive you know depends on the um I, I should say it doesn't matter if you get them from a local aquarium or if they're shipped to you a lot of them are probably pretty weak um you know they haven't eaten for a while and also they're kind of uh, scared just trying to get used to the new environment 
So try to just uh, reduce your water flow to the minimum. Just whatever is necessary to create that oxygen, oxygenation in the water. And make sure that the salinity, the temperature are in good level. Um, do, I, I would typically recommend that you do the water change in this um, quarantine tanks maybe once a week. And definitely test your copper while you do that so that um, you can redose your medication when you need to. Um, most people re recommend probably uh, like two weeks of quarantine at the very minimum. Uh, I feel more comfortable between three weeks to one month just because um, it takes a, like two or three days even to begin with your copper treatment. I don't like to dose copper right away when the new fish arrive just because they're stressed out. I want to kind of wait until they're eating. Um, once they're eating aggressively, then I'll start dosing copper because um, I've learned from experience that a lot of time copper actually suppresses their appetite, which just isn't good for the health overall. So, you know, that whole process can take a week, up to a week, I should say. And um, once you start dosing, then you know the life cycle for um, the troll font, the the, the quote-unquote egg, takes about two to three weeks, and that's where the medications are gonna break that life cycle while they get out of your fish's body and trying to find shelter in the substrate, and that's when usually the med medication will kill them. So it takes a little bit while, um, a, a little bit of time until that happens. The whole point of quarantine is that um, your fish will get rid of whatever is, it is already in their body. Um, the, the medication doesn't get into the fish's body and treat them per se. It actually treats the water and also the substrate that is around the fish and kill the parasites externally, not internally in fish. So that's how the quarantine works. And that is also the reason why every time you have new fish added to your tank, you pretty much reset the clock in your quarantine. Because as soon as you add new, add new fish in the tank, it means that um, there's a chance that uh, that fish is going to introduce new parasite slash virus slash bacteria, you know, whatever you name it, um, into the water. And then you have to reset the clock and start over again. So. In general, you don't want to stack your quarantine. You want to just finish one batch of fish, finish that quarantine, get them in the display tank. Um, I would recommend you just let the quarantine tank sit a while empty just to kill whatever is, you know, residual is left in there. But, you know, at, at that point, you, you it's okay to add new fish in there if you want to. You just don't want to mix a new batch in while the old batch is already in the tail end and thinking that the old batch will be fine by then it, it's not not really that 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 doesn't really work that way so i just want to kind of do a quick introduction and uh to this new guys hopefully in about three weeks to a month they will be in my display tank along with the uh, two others that i have in there already and that's it for today's video I hope you guys enjoyed and find it informative. If you want to see more content about reef, corals, um, you know, general knowledge, please support me by liking, commenting, and subscribing to my channel. I look forward to hear your feedback as well. Thank you. Talk to you later.